Hello there, in today's video we are going to be testing out the Fujifilm X-T. Fun. I'm excited to use this camera. I had the X-T3 for a while. I'm really keen to see if this camera is going to be a worthy upgrade from that X-T3. We're going to talk a bit of photo, a bit of video, and as ever with all of my reviews, it's going to be out in the real world doing some landscape photography. So I would love it if you were to come with me, but before we get into that, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website, or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Right, let's go. Right, so I'm set up for my first shot of the day. And one of the new things about the Fujifilm X-T4 is it's finally got a flip screen. Now, for most people, that is probably going to be better. Certainly for me, because this could potentially be a vlogging camera for me. But as a landscape photographer, and I know a lot of landscape photographers, they are not a fan of the flip screen. They prefer that old sort of limited motion one of the previous one, because for landscape photography, a lot of people will use an L bracket. And it means that if you have an L bracket sitting on this part of the camera, you then can't flip that screen out should you need to. However, I've come across a L bracket that will adjust to allow you to flip that screen out, as you can see here. I don't think now that is too much of a problem. So as you can see, I'm set up for my shot with the camera on the tripod, and I have this absolutely beautiful, gnarled old oak tree that's just looking fantastic. It's got this branch that looks broken, it looks dead, but it's still kind of leaning against the tree. What that's doing though, I think it looks fantastic, and it's just acting as a beautiful leading line from the bottom right hand side of the image up into the tree, and then in at about 18 millimeters, which is then kind of filling the frame with the tree. I've got some tricky light at the moment, as you can see, but because of that dynamic range that I have in there from the shadows down here, right into the highlights. I'm going to bracket the shot, see what the dynamic range of this camera can do, which I don't expect will be that different to the X-T3, but I still want to be sure. So it's in bracketing mode, 1 50th of a second, F11, ISO 160, which is the base ISO for this camera. I think I might have a quite nice moment to shoot now with that, without that direct sunlight. Get this camera out of the way. That looks really nice. Some beautiful detail on the shadows, the ferns, kind of that are down at my feet here in the foreground just look fantastic as they guide us into that tree down the hill. Loads of interesting detail and tone in there up to that gnarled old oak tree. This shot definitely would be better if there was some mist separating that tree from the background, but yeah, really happy with that. Great shot for the first of the day and yeah. Right, I'm set up for another shot, as you can see on the tripod here in this beautiful lake scene behind me. There's people swimming in there as well. Um, but I want to talk about the stills capabilities of this camera because when I was using the X-T3, which was the previous model, there was just always a bit of a frustration. I really liked that camera. There was just a few places where it fell short. I can't really put my finger on what that was too much but it, there was just times when I feel like it let me down. It didn't hit the mark every single time. With this X-T4, I feel Fuji have solved all of those problems. So first and foremost, a big improvement is the fact that this camera now has IBIS, that's image stabilization through the sensor moving around a little bit. Combined with stabilization, if the lens has that, and then combined with the digital stabilization, it makes even handheld walking images act video actually look really really nice another thing is it's got significantly improved autofocus it was the autofocus on the xt3 that I didn't like so much particularly for video now with the eye autofocus that this has i've actually been seriously impressed another thing that i didn't like about the xt3 was the grip it just felt uncomfortable in your hand after holding it for quite a while the xt4 is quite a little bit bigger, or a little bit bigger. It's got a deeper grip and it just feels quite a bit nicer. Even with battery grip on, it's gonna just sit in your hand all day long with no problems whatsoever. 
The other thing as well is just the improved battery. The battery life will now last a lot longer. It was horrible on the X-T3, especially if you were doing video. Now on this one, it's quite a lot nicer. What I didn't know as well is you can plug a power lead into the USB-C port with a USB power bank, and that will keep the camera going as long as the battery is actually in the camera. I think that did, the X-T3 did that as well. I didn't know, but it's a really nice thing to have. Right, so let's take this shot because I love the way this tree here, as you can see, kind of frames this scene, and that's kind of what I want to capture. So if I uh, get down to the camera here, let me move that back there. It's just a very straightforward composition, and I'm using the reed bed down here and the trees above to frame this scene. There's then a really nice kind of uh, mist in the air, which is creating a really nice texture that I think is going to be really interesting in the shot. So I've got the lines of the water leading me in, I've got those reeds in the foreground, I've got the trees in the distance which are catching the light in lots of different ways. They are quite distant because I'm at quite a wide angle, uh, 10 millimeters on this uh, 10 to 24 mil lens. I've then got some beautiful clouds, the sun coming through every now and again and it's creating ripples or it's catching the ripples on the water. So I'll probably shoot a few times just to capture these conditions slightly differently because it's changing all the time. It's actually quite exciting. So I'm at f11, ISO 160 again, and then about 125th of a second. And then bracketing yet again. Let's just flick that into the bracketing mode. There we go. And oh, these. I don't love these dials, I've got to say, I keep knocking them by accident. I don't actually use them, I just use the kind of digital controls. I know a lot of people like them. I'm just so used to using Canon, so I'm not a particular fan. I'm focusing on the reed bed, that should then get everything in focus. Bracketing, like I said, two stops either side to get all that dynamic range. Yeah, and that's a really nice shot, lovely reflections. Interesting mist and then sort of really nice sky, so really pleased with that. What There are some dragonflies flying around here as well. So I think what I might do is put a longer lens on and then test out the 240 frames a second video that this camera has, because that's pretty good, especially at 1080p. So it'll be interesting to see what the quality of that video is. It just looks beautiful down here though. Absolutely fantastic. Have a look at this footage and that picture. So since I mentioned it, walking along and using the IBIS and image stabilisation the camera has, I thought I would give it a little go I'm on very uneven terrain. It's helped to think by this wide angle lens, the 10 to 24 millimeter. It's nice having that wide angle so I'm not right up in your face. It also makes it probably a bit easier for the camera to stabilise it. What it does mean though, that the edges of the frame can potentially start jittering and shaking around, but I found this with IBIS lens stabilisation and the digital, it seems to work pretty well. So I think it's not bad though, compared to some other cameras I've used. And hopefully it's focusing on my eye, is it? Yes, it is. So it was hard work climbing out of there. So I think I've earned a little sit down and while I have a little rest, I think it's a good time to tell you about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is just a brilliant place to build your website. Building a website can be complicated, but with Squarespace, it makes it really easy. You can register your domain, you can easily build a website really, really quickly to get you going, and then you can also start selling products with an online store, and that's what I do. It's really quite straightforward. So go to squarespace.com to start your free trial today, and then if you like what you've created, you can use the offer code FIRSTMAN to get 10% off your first purchase. Right, let's talk about the video features of this camera because this now is, I would suggest, it's pretty much a hybrid camera. Now there are some people that are saying Fujifilm should split these two things off, make it either a dedicated stills camera or a dedicated video camera, but overall this is just a great stills camera, but the video features are exceptional. First you've got the flip screen which is going to make it a good vlogging camera. I'm tempted to buy it as a vlogging camera. It is like the X-T3, it's 10 bits, internal recording at 4K. It's also got the fast frame rate. Autofocus is a big improvement. Focuses much faster than the X-T3 does, which again is a bit of an improvement. And yeah, just really good video features, amazing video features in fact, in a camera 
this size. With the X-T3, I found it a little bit fiddly sometimes. This is a bit better. It just seems to turn on faster, starts recording faster. It will also record video to both memory cards at the same time, so you can back up your video as well, which is important. This could easily, easily be used as a pro video camera. Once you start to rig it out with a microphone and maybe on a gimbal, that kind of thing, I would just wish they'd change a couple of these dials to be custom functions. So like on this Canon camera that I'm recording on now, it has three custom functions where you can just turn a dial to C1, C2, C3, and you can save any single setting that the camera has, including shutter speed, frames per second, all that kind of thing, to one of those custom settings. Wish this had it, because changing between shooting in 4K at 25 frames per second to 100 frames per second is annoying. So if I was to use this on a commercial video job, I could do it, but when the pressure's on, I would just want it to work a little bit more dedicated as a video camera. But it's so small, you can get such good quality footage and you're carrying around the ability to capture just, yeah, stunning quality footage. Don't really know what else to say about it. It's good. So I'm now set up for my last shot of the day and have these absolutely stunning clouds behind me. They're just rising up into the sky and then catching the light coming in from the side. They look very much like they could turn into storm clouds, which uh, it's not surprising because it's been a very sweaty day. The X-T4 is just pretty much in all areas uh, an overall upgrade to the X-T3. Ibis particularly. This shot here was taken at 1 13th of a second and for me as a landscape photographer that's actually really important because for landscape images you want them generally to be as clean as possible keeping that ISO and therefore that noise as low as possible. Where normally with a handheld shot, I would bump the shutter speed up to make sure that the image is sharp and steady. That means I've got to boost the ISO. But with that IBIS, it actually makes handheld landscape photography much more accessible and also with much cleaner images. I mean, just look at this one. It's sharp all over the frame. And I'm actually really, really impressed by that. I was That's not something I was expecting to love because I've always been I don't want to knock it off the cliff there. I've always been a proponent of pushing that shutter speed, but the IBIS is very, very good in this camera. The eye autofocus is great for portraits. The grip is better. It's more comfortable in the hand. The battery is better. And it's those things that I think, for me, make the upgrade worth it. If you're into video, then yeah, great. Like we said, yeah, for landscape photographers, I definitely think this is probably a worthwhile upgrade, but if you don't own an X-T3 already and you're considering it, then definitely go for the X-T4. There's also no doubt in my mind that this is the best crop sensored camera on the market. I know a lot of you get annoyed even having the discussion about crop sensor, but I love what food you've done. I've said it before, the crop sensor affordable camera like this that gives you almost full frame quality and then if you want them to go notch up, you go to the beautiful medium format cameras that I've tried before. I think I'm probably going to pick one up as my vlogging camera. I've enjoyed it as a video camera today. Not perfect, but really like the camera. But I want to talk through this picture. That, that cloud is just in, incredible. It's amazing. The conditions are just stunning at the moment. I'm going to bracket just to make sure I get it all in. I'm at a shutter speed of 100th of a second ever living. 160th of a second. I'm getting some of these trees kind of framing those distant fields there down at the bottom and then we rise up into those dramatic clouds and that's what this image is all about. Uh, very straightforward two second timer. Here we go move this one out of the way. Let's have a look at that. Oh, yes. What a way to finish the day. What a way to finish the review. I hope you enjoyed this. This is the kind of thing I do. If you're not subscribed already please do so and I'll see you on another one very very soon. I've got some interesting stuff coming up as well. See you.